Gary. It is so good to be with you. I know I said before that Corey was going to be up this time around to talk about the Lord supplying in the time of lack, but circumstances did arise and we weren't able to do that. So we do plan on having that episode. That topic won't be this time, but it should be in two weeks from now. So please do keep an eye out for that. We definitely are. I'm personally looking forward to it. I know Corey is definitely looking forward to it. The Lord's really been speaking to her about some things, showing her some scriptures and showing that he really does provide in the midst of struggles. And believe it or not, the Lord has definitely been providing and definitely been moving in our lives at in which seems like a hopeless time, but it definitely isn't a hopeless time. In fact, for everyone, we're always in a season in one point or another where our situation looks hopeless, but God always intervenes in those moments of hopelessness because as Paul said, his strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. So whenever we feel weak, that's a perfect opportunity for us to invite the Lord in and ask him to be our strength. And not only is it good to do that, because the Lord will actually begin to heal us in the areas where we need healing. And the more we invite him in for for those moments and times where we need strength, boom, he's going to he's going to help in the areas that we need. So we definitely should be hopeful and not feel hopeless and that's a good word for myself as well and i just thank you lord for being my strength especially now but i'm just going to pray i'm just going to say heavenly father we thank you lord for this time we thank you lord for what you're going to do today lord we just pray that you would move mightily in And through this episode, Lord, that you would be a mouthpiece, that anything that is outside of truth would be thrown to the cross. And anything that is of the flesh, we just pray that you would place at the cross. And we only want your fruit and your fruit alone. I personally only want your fruit and your fruit alone. Because your fruit will mature, ripen, plant seeds, and then grow more fruit. And that's what we want. That's what we want in the kingdom of God. We want the darkness to be pushed back and we want the light to increase. And that's what we pray for in this time and this season. Lord, we thank you for your revival that you're bringing forward. And we thank you for the refining and the renewal and the transformation that you're bringing forward in the body of Christ. And Father, we just we just say come forth in more power and more might. And Father, I just declare that the darkness is being pushed back in the name of Jesus and that the fire of God is coming through with refining and conviction to push things away. Lord, we thank you for this time and season of revival and we thank you for this time and season to be able to go out and and minister to the lost. We thank you for this time that the darkness is being pushed back so that our voices will be able to come forward stronger for however long that you decide to do so. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for that. And, Lord, we thank you for even the fire that I'm feeling right now, even as I speak in the name of Jesus. So... Though the topic is about prayer, this is how I'm going to start out with. I was listening to a friend of mine uh, have a little discussion. And in the discussion, uh, this friend of mine and Corey's, she was talking about how there was a particular pastor uh, recently in the summertime felt like he got a revelation from the Lord whether that's true or whether whether it's false discernment or whether it's just a, a personal fleshly decision that's remained to be seen. But this person said that he received a revelation from the Lord. He felt that the Lord was telling him to leave his wife and leave his children and go out and do things that uh, the Lord wanted him to do. 
and from what I understand from our friend, that this person, who's well known, but I just at this point in time I don't feel like I don't need to bring this person out into the open. Anyway, this person apparently is living not so much of a lifestyle that he should be. And granted, this person has done some evang uh, evangelism and some other things recently that's been pretty well known. And it it's good that fruit is growing in places where fruit should grow. We should realize that the fruit doesn't always grow like it should when there are personal circumstances that need to be dealt with. And I know for my own sake, as I was walking and have been walking, and the Lord has allowed me to touch people's lives, I, I know that each time that I receive a revelation of His goodness, or receive a deliverance, or a healing, or something of one nature or another, and I find freedom, I am able to minister differently. I am able to teach differently. And the people around me will think, respond, and act in more of a fruitful way than those that were in the past. And that's important because whatever our intent or whatever certain hurts or whatever certain strongholds or things that are inside of us at a time and a season, if those things aren't dealt with in the way that they should, then that can cause the people that are learning from us to take on certain things that they may not even be conscious of. They may look at the person and see like there's nothing going on with them or there's nothing really wrong with them and everything is good behind closed doors. But what they're actually doing is they're actually receiving something that is making a negative impact on them. Now granted, there could be a lot of fruit that could grow out of a person, but that doesn't negate the fact that there will be some areas that would be toxic for those people to minister over others. It's like a domino effect. And there were points in times where I actually had to go and apologize to some people that I was mentoring or they unknowingly knew that I was mentoring them or even even supervising or uh, however however you would call it but uh, as I found more freedom I was able to look at myself in a different light and I was able to look at Jesus in, in, a, in a different way and I was able to see the areas where I was lacking I was able to rectify some of those circumstances now granted there were people in my past life that I may not have been able to apologize or maybe not have been able to say, go back to them and say I was wrong. But if the Lord is willing and the time is right, there could be an opportunity for me to do that. So it's always good to be humble. And in a time and a season where we have the opportunity to rectify our situations, we should do so. I was praying and I was asking the Lord about this particular circumstance with this pastor and I was like Lord that's horrible because I I know our friend was looking at the pastor as as strong in faith uh, grounded uh, person in the Lord very good and firm in doctrine and when this person would uh, preach or say something it would always be in a way of repentance and it would always be about repentance for her to look at this person in that light and for me to even do that, it kind of like sends a shockwave through your spirit. And it definitely did for me because that changes things. And it's one thing if, we, we have a, if we're doing something we're not supposed to do, but we have a repentant heart and we have a desire to change and we have no desire to change and we think we're completely right in... The circumstance and that's what I also want to add, bring to the table is that somebody could be teaching somebody or mentoring over somebody and the simple fact that they have a repentant heart and a simple fact that they have a desire to be more like Jesus that is enough 
to change the circumstances so, th- so certain habits aren't passed down from individual to individual. So I, I do want to make that clear is it-, it comes down to having a repentant heart because if we have a repentant heart, then we will change and people will look around us and they will see the change that is in us. And because we're changing in a positive way and changing in a good way, they're going to want that. And that's where the fruit is. It's not always with uh, miracles, signs, and wonders and people getting healed and falling down and being restored and getting delivered. And a lot of the times it comes down to is where is the fruit in that individual's life and are they changing on a consistent basis? That's what's important. And a lot of the times is... It's the not so personal relationships, but it's enough to see the change in the individual that brings them the desire to want to receive that, to want to receive that change. And if there's miracle signs and wonders that come down down the road after that, then that's good. But most of the time when it comes to personal uh, relationships and other things, it's usually there has to be a developed relationship, a developed intimacy that has to come out of it before a lot of those things transpire. What the Lord showed me is, because I was praying about the whole thing, and I'm like, man, this is horrible. That this was such a a great pastor and things like that. And trust me, there's always room for redemption. Don't get me wrong. So this person could have this particular circumstance and completely be changed and transformed, which I hope that the person would, and then go back to the truth. And here's where here's where I'm going to go with this, because the Lord what the Lord showed me was that the children will not know the true love of the Father because of the circumstance that happened. And I thought about it for a minute, and then and then the wheels started turning, and I'm just like, oh, because Jesus is the bridegroom, and. The body of Christ is the bride. When we come to Christ, there's a covenant that is made. And it, it, it co- it's, it's equal to the covenant with Israel. When, when Abraham made that covenant, and then it came down to Jacob, there, there, was, a, there was a marriage that was made. And if you look at throughout Scripture... It always talks about Israel as a covenant being in right standing with God. Not so much. But praise be to God that the redemption of Israel has happened once again. And just like in the early 1900s, Israel was made into a nation once again. So the redemption and marriage of Israel is still there as the Abrahamic covenant. And alongside of that, with the new covenant, we have we have this like marinated thing going on. We got the the blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, plus with with the covenant with Israel, and plus and the Jewish people. Don't get me wrong, and and then also with the new covenant, the Gentiles are grafted in to this covenant and we we become part of both and all the blessings that Abraham had and has we freely receive and he freely gives so when you look at the marriage aspects of things and you see the marriage with the bridegroom and the bride there's a covenant that's supposed to to be made and it's a lasting covenant and just like the lasting covenant with Israel being established as a nation so is so is it that when a man and a woman come together and they unite there there needs to be an honor there needs there's a covenant that's being established and what we have here is a marriage between the bride and the bridegroom is the example of the love that Jesus Christ has for the body of Christ. It's a love that Jesus has for Israel. It's a love that the Father has for Israel. It's a love that the Father has for all of us. 
which is supposed to last. And when we're unfaithful in that covenant, when we're idolatrous in that covenant, when we look away from the Father, when we look away from Jesus and we we go about our, our lives and doing other things, and we're dishonoring and we're, we're harmful to our brethren and we're, we're harmful to other people. Just like it says, love God with all your heart, soul, and strength and love your neighbor as yourself, even though that they're not part of the body of Christ, we're suppo- still supposed to show honor and we're still supposed to show love just the same. And when we're not operating in what the the Lord requires us of us in in the word then we're going astray and what we have here with with the pastor is this is a prime example because what happens is it it begins to bring doubt it begins to bring uncertainty and I look at the children in this particular circumstance and the children are like Okay, so if our own father is like this, then wh- why wouldn't our heavenly father not do the same thing? And then we begin to lose the grasp of the biblical concept of what our heavenly father is supposed to be and who Jesus Christ is supposed to be. We lose the concept of what a lasting covenant is supposed to be. And the, the, our perspective of what a covenant is in our minds will not be the same as the reality of what the Word says. It was so simple and so easy when the Lord showed it to me. For some reason, it takes a little bit more for me to, to speak about in this episode. But just the same... I'm sure it can make an impact and it made an impact in in me and it 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 stirred something up into my heart and I'm just like Lord make me an even stronger example of what the love of the Father is make me an even stronger example of of his goodness make me an even stronger example of a covenant keeper make me a strong example of what Jesus Christ loving the church is supposed to be. That's what I want. And that's what we all should want. Even though things are going really good and our marriages may be right on track, we should still want more of that. We should still want an even greater life, a fruitful life in Jesus. And that's what Jesus will do for us. Take it from me. My road to start off with was not paved in gold. But I can tell you now, it is so much better. I could use a lot more refining. And it will definitely come. As long as I seek the Father, the Father will pour out on me. And brothers and sisters in Christ, that's some good stuff. It's some really good stuff. I truly believe that the darkness is going to be pushed back. I do believe that there is going to be a chance of righteousness. I do believe that there is going to be a strong chance of some turnaround. That doesn't mean that the shaking is completely done. It doesn't mean... We have a little bit more to go. I can personally say that in my dreams, or I should say my dream that was about the nation, there was particular parts that talked about the ships that were out in the sea and that they were bringing supplies in a rocky storm. I believe that we are now in this point and in this season where we are, if we look at the news, there are supply ships that are out in sea. They're they're out in sea and it's almost like 
why aren't they coming to shore? And as the video that I put out last week about my word about the ships coming to shore, I do believe that this is the point in time where that is going to happen. Is the Lord is going to provide us with provisions in this time, in this season. It takes me to this scripture that we have, that I have in front of us right now. And it's Matthew 6, 26 through 34. It goes like this. Look at the birds of the air, for they, are, they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, and yet I say to you that even Solomon in his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith! Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own troubles so we should med meditate on that <sighs> because just as the bridegroom provides for the bride so shall our heavenly father provide for us and the good news about the dream that i had and the ships correlating together is we're halfway there we're halfway through the trials we're halfway through the storm we're halfway through the shaking and God will provide God will bring those ships back to shore God is exposing a lot of things God is causing revival to break out not only in this nation but many other places in the world now is the time to rejoice now is the time to be glad let us embrace the refining process that we're going through. Let us embrace this process of change because God is going to do new things in our lives and God is about to move in ways that we cannot even imagine. How long? When are things going to go back to how it is now? I don't know. We may not know the day and hour of things, but we do know seasons, and the Lord does give us discernment about seasons. So all as I can say is some of the seasons that are coming up may not be as intense as it is now. But like I said, a shaking is a shaking, so who knows when the next shaking is. And if the Lord gives me some insight, I'll give you guys some insight. If not, then glory be to God. We got a little bit of a, some rest coming up. And I do believe that we're going to have a time of rest. So, Lord, we praise you for that. So, Father, I just uh, I praise you and I thank you. And I thank you for all the things that you're doing in other people's lives. Lord, I, I thank you for the miracles of prayer that you've been doing in our lives for others. And Father, I pray that you will pour that out on those that are listening. Father, I pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to touch them in areas of lack, in areas of struggle, in areas of fear, in the areas of worry, in the areas of pain, sickness, disease. Father, I, I pray that whoever is listening and they got some sort of 
sickness, infirmity, or something going along that's health related, Father, I pray that you will push that back and remove that in the name of Jesus right now. Father, if they're struggling with depression, anxiety, fear, worry, Father, right now I just pray that those, those spirits are removed, fear is removed, depression is removed, anger is removed. worry is removed father I pray that you would instill a peace in them father I pray that if anybody is struggling and needs a home Lord I pray that you would bring that home to them Lord I pray if there's you know if, like I said if there's lack if there's things that people need um, that they're unable to get in normal circumstances Lord I pray that you would do those things too and Father, I thank you that you work all things together for good. You may not be the cause of everything, but you work all things together for good for those who are in Christ Jesus. So Lord, we just pray that you would move. This is, a, this is the season of breakthrough. <laughs> and I know for a fact Many of us have been walking through a season of lack. Whether it's physical, whether it's spiritual, whether it's emotional. It just seems like a time of lack. But Lord, we thank you that you are in the midst of everything. And we thank you that you're pouring out your spirit upon us and giving us strength. If anybody feels weary, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would give them strength. Give them supernatural strength so that they can feel it. Allow them to feel the peace in their lives, Lord. And Lord, we give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name. Amen.